This episode has been brought to you by Minster Bank, Plus One Professionals, Albert Sporting Goods, American Legion Post 323, Fowler's TV, St. Mary's Eagle 767, Speckman Automotive, Auglaise Audiology, Rabel's Auto Service, American Manufacturing Solutions, Speed's Chiropractic, and Miller Funeral Home. The Friends of the St. Mary's Theater need your financial help to secure a state grant, which we need to raise $500,000 in individual contributions by the end of 2021. Any donation is welcome and suggested donations, which can be pledged, are $200, $1,823, $2,023 and beyond. Send check to Friends of SM Theater P.O. Box 382 St. Mary's, Ohio or visit Graham Opera House Live to make an online payment to the 501c3. The time is now to make this happen. See more on our Facebook page at Graham Opera House Live. Welcome from the auditorium of the St. Mary's Theater. The stage behind us has been home to entertainment of all sorts since opening day, November 1895, starting with the play, Nancy. There have been numerous vaudeville acts, silent movies, a performance by John Philip Sousa's band right here, magicians, hypnotists, Summerfest pageants, Dream Big contestants, and local theater productions and a world premiere of a Hollywood movie. St. Marion, William K. Howard's Back Door to Heaven was premiered at this very theater in 1939. I often wonder about his dream as a young lad in St. Mary's to become a writer, producer, and director of movies. Did he tell friends, family, town folk of his dreams to one day write and produce a screenplay about his hometown and to hold the world premiere of his movie right here in this very theater? Did friends, family, and town folk believe in his dream? Dreams. How many of us bury our dreams? Dreams. Van Halen wrote and charted a top 25 song called Dreams. Dreams. How many of us no longer pursue our dreams? C.S. Lewis once said, you are never too old to set another goal or to dream a new dream. An anonymous quote that I love is, every morning you have two choices. Continue to sleep with your dreams or wake up and chase them. Today's guest epitomizes the messaging of the previous two quotes. Enjoys Van Halen and hopefully parallels William K. Howard's dream and reality. You see, today's guest, Mr. Joe Ginter, has recently published Ditchman and Ditchman Two, two screenplays based in St. Mary's, Ohio. I have faith in Joe Ginter and his screenplays and believe one day soon, the world premiere of Ditchman will take place in the very theater back door to heaven took place. Joe, welcome to Rider Nation Station, and thank you for waking up and chasing your dreams. Um, your phone call back in February kind of woke me up to get back into the chase when you suggested, let's get this theater back up and running. Excellent. Glad we both woke up. So we're going to talk about Ditchman, Ditchman 2, kind of. Uh, together and there's a Ditchman 3 that's coming so without this is kind of the difficult part we need to talk about it but without telling everybody what it's totally about so can you give us a quick synopsis about Ditchman um, although the the story is pretty much based in St. Mary's we had to kind of borrow the windmills from the Van Wert area and their byproduct along with agricultural runoff it was flowing into ditches and ended up underneath rural cemeteries where somehow these creatures were being formed with the help of a local science teacher, Miss Amy Griner, Mrs. Amy Griner, who mysteriously passed away a few months earlier, leaving a very grief-stricken husband 
Mr. Jay Greiner, who also was a teacher at the local high school. He accidentally bumps into her research and tries to continue it and ends up finding these ditchmen who have already started making their presence known around town. So the ditchmen kind of invade St. Mary's. It leads into a full out invasion, which wasn't necessarily an invasion. It was more of a reaction that the townspeople took as an invasion. Excellent. So there, folk, that's your synopsis. If you want the full story, you're going to buy Ditchman, Ditchman 2. You can go online. Hopefully soon we'll have them available for sale at the Miami and Erie Trading Company. So find that book and we'll talk more about it in a with, little bit. With all royalties, everything of author royalties go to the Friends of the St. Mary's Theater. And, and that is unbelievable, so, Joe. So well, everything that is going to happen I, yeah, out of yeah. that book sale, hopefully I'm scared to death. thousands of books. I don't want to present a big check here that says <laughs> 1995 to me, you know, Every, or, or even a bill. <laughs> yeah. Every bit counts. All right. So when, where, why, how did you come up with the concept of Ditchman? When as young as four, I used to, on the way to both of my grand, I had a grandparent lived in Hoytville, Ohio, one in Winchester, Indiana. And I would always stare at the ditches to avoid getting car sick. Okay. And this is the early 60s. And I even had found a sketch that I always kept of these creatures that I imagined coming out of the ditch. In the book, we describe them as part Bigfoot, part Gumby. <laughs> and, um, and then it led to just a few years later, because I've been writing screenplays since high school. So, and on a trip to Salt, Great, uh, Salt Lake State Fort Park in Ohio with um, meeting the Krug family there to, that's where the uh, Bigfoot has been spotted in a, uh, the TV show Finding Bigfoot had filmed there and we went there to look at the same trails and the, the whole screenplay just popped in my head on the drive there. Just, I'll be darned. Yeah, just the whole story. So, it, it's a book, but it's, it's written as a screenplay. So it, why, why did you go screenplay versus traditional well, novel? My idea was to use my students as a test audience and advisors and proofreaders because First of all, I'm a language arts teacher, and that was just beneficial for them. They were, had unbelievable comments and unbelievable suggestions. And one of their suggestions was, J.K. Rowling has a screenplay in our library. Let's turn it into a, a, I mean, has a screenplay in a book form in our library. Let's do that. So we took that. And that's where we get the idea of turning it into a book. It's, um, if you don't like reading books, it's not, you're gonna like this because you can even use, a, Mrs. Rhonda Shelby, as we know, uses her Alexa, because it, it suggests a soundtrack. It's visual, it's present tense. So it's not in third person, it's not in first, it's, it's just an easy read that you can visualize and not, Fall asleep. And it's a quick, fun read, and obviously there's a bias because a lot of it is, is pertaining to St. Mary's, Ohio, just like William K. Howard's Back Door to Heaven. Mm -hmm. I've got that bias that I think it's a great movie, but maybe that's just because it's my hometown that's the setting and the characters and the street names and Back Door mm -hmm. to Heaven. But this is a quick, easy, fun read. Mm -hmm. it's, it's full of clean comedy. Good, clean comedy. Com good, clean comedy is not dead. Bingo. And, and it's right here. It's full of musical references, St. Mary's references, inspirational and meaningful life lessons. How do you classify this writing? I see biography. I see comedy. I see horror. I see mystery. I see suspense thriller. I see romance. I see science fiction. How do you classify Ditchman? Um. I've had 
professional people classify it as comedy horror, dark comedy, engaging comedy, distinctive comedy. I just, it's my gift to my former students and anybody, all my friends and anyone else I've known, just I want them to remember and the key message is enjoy the struggle because we all have our struggles in life and too often we try to escape those struggles. So this is my way, my mark of trying to make this world a better place. And, and you don't have to be from St. Mary's, Ohio to enjoy this no, book. This no. book has, if you enjoy music, if you enjoy clean comedy, if you pop culture, enjoy inspirational, motiv motivational, the pop culture aspects, it's all interwoven into this book. Like I said, it's a fun, quick, great read. Even, but it's, even the wall culture, wall, wall, Woke. Woke. I can't even say the word. They would get upset because there's nothing to complain about. <laughs> so, It's a coffee table book that's not about coffee tables. That's how I would describe it. That's, that's a <laughs> very poetic way of describing it. So, as I mentioned before, there's Ditchman. There's Ditchman 2. However, there's also a third that's coming. Did you always know as you were developing this that it was going to be a trilogy? No, I um, wrote the original. It came out, it was released during, right when the lockdown happened. So that's typical my life, enjoying the struggle when you have a book release when every bookstore in the country closes. <laughs> and with that, you know, to get my mind off that, I uh, spent my COVID lockdown writing the next two installments. So I had plenty of time, plenty of time. Does it end with the third? Or it, do we need to find out? There is no, there's a cliffhanger in the second, but there is no cliffhanger in the third. That doesn't mean it has to end, but there is no cliffhanger, which a lot of people I think are gonna appreciate because a lot of people were unhappy with the cliffhanger. <laughs> and, yeah. But cliffhanger is good. I get you with the one Oh, it's a the great second. cliffhanger. Yes. Great. So I've never written a book. Most people have never written a book. Take us through that process from conception to the end of how you put all these ideas together as far as, you know, how do you come up with setting? How do you come up with characters? The, the, the multiple stories that are kind of isolated, but they all synthesize into the final product of, having meaning all the way around with what you're trying to accomplish as a yep. writer. I start with flip notes all over my house, and then I organize those flip notes into the story. I handwrite the first rough draft. I type that up, and then I would read it to my students. They put in their input, and then I go back and retype a final draft. That's how the... It's a monumental task. It's yeah. not just sitting down in front of the computer and, and starting to type. No, no I, I have to break it up into... Because you would just... If I was in front of the computer, the whole process, you, you just lose interest. And like I said, there's, there, there's, there's multiple sub-stories that are going on in this. And, and, and I think that's such a, I mean, a it, creative... I might take one friend that I know from a long time ago and just put one little thing about them just to... For, in honor of them. For like recognition, yeah. Recognition, I honor my grandparents some way. I honor, I'm always looking for motifs, they're kind of called. Okay. Where hidden little gems in there that. So the name may not be the same, but the individual who they, they, did. Oh, they're always trying to figure out who, I know who that is. <laughs> I, and my students, there's lessons. My actual lessons yep. are in here. Yep. And it's also create awareness because we send it, my students had me send it to a screenplay contest. It, it didn't win, but part of the contest is they critiqued it. Okay. They were, everything was positive, except they needed to develop the main character more. And my student says, that main character has to be me. Well, if you don't know me, um, I suffered from Crohn's disease. I lost my large intestine in 1984, part of my small intestine. Um, and it was hard for me to make that character about the struggles with having an ostomy bag. 
And if you know that, if you ever have me in a classroom, I fart as I teach. And my students, you know, handle it great and everything, but that was hard for me to put that in the book, that it was me. Yeah, it's, it's those who know Mr. Ginner, and when you read this, it's self-apparent that it, it Mr. Is, Griner is, me. is Mr. Ginter. Right. And uh, you put yourself out there. I mean, you're, yeah, you, you're kind not, of exposed. That's my students. My students, when you got a student, a 10, 11-year-old standing up saying, this needs to be you. I mean, it was just. That's awesome. That is awesome. Yeah. And that's the best part. The whole process is the best part. Chasing the dream. The chase is going to be better than every. I mean, we can show, let's say it got made into a movie. Well, and that's when I own the rights to the, the film rights, so I can try to you know, get studios read. Of course, they quit reading during lockdown. I would think, oh, I'm so excited, I'm getting my dream, but it would not be as good as the chase. And those who are afraid of chasing dreams, the chase is always going to be the best part. Outstanding. So, so part of the chase, and again, never have written a book, never even attempted to write a book in my life, how do you go from, man, this work is awesome, but it's close to the best because you're one of the few who have read it, to getting a publisher to accept it and put it in a book form, market it, sell it, that they're making money and that you're earning royalties, which, as we, Joe mentioned before, the royalties go to the friends of the St. Mary's Theater for the revitalization of the theater in the ballroom. Yep. What's that process like when you're chasing? Well, I had that's got to be a roller coaster ride there. Oh, I had a, a, a book published in 1981, so I was 39 years in between books. Um, and then it has changed so much with technology has changed. But back then, I paid for all the printing. You know, they <laughs> they had some limited distribution. They sent me the copies. That's when my health broke down, right when it was, that was released. It was a recession. It was only $5. I think I sold 89 copies. Um, now, with the technology, it's a little different. You, you can still do, the, you know, there's companies that you pay for all the printing. You get all the books. This company, I, get up, I put up a little bit of security up front but I get 100% royalties until that's all covered. They have distribution, as you, it's everywhere. It's mm -hmm. Barnes & Noble. It's in the network that every bookstore sees. They, they make a commercial. Um, it's not, probably not gonna be as good as the commercial my students made for this one. Um, that's just came out today. Uh, and we're gonna show that as part of the vodcast oh, as well. That's great. They did a great job yes, on that. Yes, they did. Uh, Dan Cook is like Steven Spielberg. Um, <laughs> he video, he's a vid, you know, visualized it all. Um, we get a lot of help from the uh, computer teacher at West, which is um, Jen Spees. She was very, she always got a good advice, so. With help and create the video. Yeah, on yeah. The, the technology, especially so, the technology part. So the publisher, which is a Christian-based publisher, yes, if I recall. It, right. No cussing, no cuss words. It, I mean, that was the hardest part is, I used to be a comedian before I was a school teacher and I was pretty inappropriate, let's say. And for me to change my ways, and I, that all started when I became a teacher 33 years ago. Um, I was proud of the fact that I wrote this clean screenplay because I've had, you know, I didn't always do that. Yep didn't always do that, so. You probably got some rejections from publishing oh. companies? In the 80s, I probably had you know, boxes of rejections and not even, just, they wouldn't even read it. Yeah. You know, I don't want to read it. You know, you tell, because you, they won't take it, right? They, you know, they just send it back. But you get rejections when you just try to get, would you read this, it's about this. And, um, that was my first book. And the first book was just to get attention for the screenplays I wrote in the 80s, which I still have, but I wouldn't, I, I, they're, yeah. not, they're nothing like, you know, you just get better and better with your writing, the older you get, so. So let's go back to William K. Howard. St. Mary's boy. Ash Street. Right, just a few blocks away. 
He used in Back Door to Heaven, St. Mary's as a setting. You'll see it referenced on a letter, you, you, uh, St. Mary's, Ohio. You see uh, a few guys that are in front of the bank of St. Mary's is how it's referenced. Uh, characters, um, Charlie Makeley and Jim Tolley are referenced as the characters in this movie. And this isn't his only movie. He has multitudes of, of movies, but this one was St. Mary's, Ohio, and world premiered here at the theater that Joe and I are sitting on the stage of right now. Kind of, kind of amazing to think about. Oh, yeah. Was it easy or difficult to use St. Mary's culture and aspects and characters in developing Ditch Oh, no, that's just fun. That oh, is so yeah. fun. I should even say this, but in the third installment, I'll just say, there is a outrageous chasing involving the canal boat museum. <laughs> I mean, right there alone, you can't imagine. Yeah. And where it ends up. There's so, a little teaser to, a little, to get that is a teaser, Ditchman yes. 3. Yes. So Joe, I, I'm ready to have another St. Mary and have their product turned into a movie. What would it take for your screenplay to be made into a movie and then have the world premiere right here, just like William K. Howard did in 1939? What type of arduous process is that? I just think this is, this is my weakest is promoting myself or promoting my work, but it's just got to get in the hands of the right person. Luck. Yeah, yeah. It's just got to like be. Like so many things yeah. that, that happen. Yeah. Luck. Oh, my whole life has been kind of like that. I'm sure you look at your own lives. It's, mm -hmm. it's just, ah, just miss that. Or just miss. So any of you that are watching that know the right person, get them Ditchman, Ditchman 2 in their hands. Because it, like it, it's, it's amazing. It's funny. It's clean. It has inspirational and motivational life lessons. I, I can totally, I, totally see this evolving into a movie. When we come back, we'll do the second half of the interview with Mr. Joe Ginner, author of Ditchman, Ditchman 2. But prior to the second half of the interview, we'll come back to the Writer Nation Station Word Association game. The Friends of the St. Mary's Theatre need your financial help to secure a state grant, which we need to raise $500,000 in individual contributions by the end of 2021. Any donation is welcome and suggested donations, which can be pledged, are $200, $1,823, $2,023 and beyond. Send check to Friends of SM Theatre P.O. Box 382 St. Mary's, Ohio or visit Graham Opera House Live to make an online payment to the 501c3. The time is now to make this happen. See more on our Facebook page at Graham Opera House Live. This episode has been brought to you by Minster Bank, Plus One Professionals, Albert Sporting Goods, American Legion Post 323, Fowler's TV, St. Mary's Eagle 767, Speckman Automotive, Auglaise Audiology, Rabel's Auto Service, American Manufacturing Solutions, Spee's Chiropractic, and Miller Funeral Home. Welcome back. Thank you to all of our sponsors for helping make Rider Nation Station what it actually is. They've been involved in sports, they've been involved in parades, and they're involved in our, for, our vodcast, which our vodcast is how we actually started in 2019, doing historical interviews about people, places, events, to make certain that people well into the future know what their town was all about. Well, Joe, you ready for 
Rider Nation Station word uh, association game? It scares me to death. Awesome. <laughs> so when I tell you, or you see it on the screen, you've got to come up, and you don't have to immediately shout it out, but what's the first word that comes to your mind? And then I'll have you elaborate, but okay. only one word. All right. Ready? Yep. The beer stoop. <laughs> yeah, I got it. What is it? Um, what's the word for never? You want me to elaborate now? I need it. Yep. I never had a beer in the beer stoop. Ah. And I probably was the most outrageous person, one of the most outrageous persons there at times. But, and but I never had a beer. Fill in the gap for us, the beer stube. What was it? It was originally the Pizza Shack, where Villanova carry out. Now sits. It now sits. It was originally the Pizza Shack. I just, I could still taste the pizza there. The cheese would just, you know, the kind of cheese. Yep. And it became the coat of arms, the Four Musketeers. Four Musketeers. In between was the beer stube. Uh, Wednesday night was late, was the, that was key. I was 18 was the drink age my senior year. So it was full of seniors on Wednesday nights. Yeah. Later, when it became Probably other places, Probably a lot of missing homework nights. on Thursday mornings. Yes, I'm, <laughs> I'm sure of it, yeah. So. All right, never. Excellent. D'Artagnan. After game dances. That's two words. After game you dances. You get half a point. D'Artagnan. What, what's D'Artagnan? It, it was a, the band that played locally, especially after football games and basketball games, they always had dances in the old auditorium, and we had some great rock and roll bands play. Just great, great rock and roll bands play. Uh, and I can still just, the song Stealing by Uriah Heep. And it wasn't always just them played that. I, I don't want to take it. Right, right. There was Sterling Frost did an incredible version of that. Who, which, who were some of the members that were part of D'Artagnan? Um, New Knoxville, Scott Steinecker, uh, Jeff Cathcart, Jeff Winget, and of course Ron Raspberry. There we go, D'Artagnan. Here comes the third one. The St. Mary's Swimming Pool. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That was a hangout in high school. You went from the swimming pool to Whitling's carryout, where the Dairy Queen is. Ah, yeah. you, got, you got kicked out of one parking lot, you go back to the other parking lot. You just went back and forth from the swimming pool. Um, they had a, an area where when you weren't swimming, it was a spectator's area. It was, it was a high school hangout. And there's some hilarious stories from, from the St. Mary's swimming pool. I used to drag race cars there, but I didn't race a car. I was pretty fast and I would, along that side street, I was on foot. <laughs> and, you know, guys come up in their super cars and they want to challenge me. And if you didn't know what was going on, people, you don't have a car. <laughs> and, no, and I would, and I would race them. And I, I was about 50%, one half the time. So ah. I get off to a good start. <laughs> That's so. very unique. Yeah. <laughs> you referenced it earlier. The 1923 auditorium stage. Oh, I just, uh, Led Zeppelin. Elaborate. On record hops, it wasn't always bands, and um, they would play Ladies' Choice. And usually a, a, the girl of not my choice, let's say, would ask me to play lady, you know, to right, dance. Right, right. And it was always Stairway to Heaven, which is a <laughs> 10 minute song. At least it wasn't in a Gata DeVita. Yeah. Oh my, yeah. <laughs> you know, 10 minutes of dancing with a girl of not your choice was <laughs> probably something I deserved. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, congratulations, Joe. You won. You were the only contestant. Oh, well. Okay. But, but you won. And here's your, uh, here's your prize. Oh my. I know that oh you my. love t-shirts. Yes, this is, yes. I'm and here is your very own Ditchman 2 t-shirt. And I would like to give uh, kudos to Miami and Erie Trading Company for making this happen. Thank you, Josie. Thank Josie, you, Josie, thank you, Josie. Marion. Oh, my. There is your oh winning. And uh, I couldn't just ask for one. Ooh. So I've got my own 
Ditchman 2 from Miami and Erie Trading Company as well. And we're working on getting the books available at Miami and Erie Trading Company where town folk can go uh, buy the book there. All book royalties. I don't get a penny. You mentioned this a couple times, Joe, as we get back into the interview portion of uh, this podcast. Enjoy the struggle. It's a common theme message contained throughout the two books. I'm certain the third one, which isn't available for me to read yet. Where did you come up with this saying, and, and what exactly do you mean? I, I'm not exactly sure of the light bulb moment, but I'm pretty sure it has to do when I woke up. I was flown in a helicopter, life flighted to Cleveland Clinic in June 1984, waking up with so many tubes in me. I, I remember the surgeon, who was the same surgeon that did the Pope who got shot in the early 80s, huh. so I had some confidence in him, said, uh, can't guarantee you'll be alive after this. And I was flatlined for seven seconds Yikes. in the pre-op room, which was just an incredible experience. But I woke up just full of tubes, and there you are with a bag, and then my therapist and my parents, especially my mother, right away it was, you know, they had that perfect equal medium between tough love and sympathy. And I didn't get much of the sympathy in my face. They got behind my back, but it was pretty much, hey, you got your whole life yet, you know, yeah. you gotta get back to work. Yeah. And just, I was getting, so, I'm laying here like this, you know, no. <laughs> and it, and from that, formulated, you know, I have to get up and enjoy my struggle. Because mm -hmm. just, and in the books, he explains some of the little things we don't realize have an ostomy that you have to go through. And, you know, becoming a teacher, they, you know, I have so many, if I had every professor told me, I don't see you being a teacher, mainly because of the noise I made, which is, mm -hmm. sorry, I mean, that's my disability. Sure, you can't see my disability, you can hear my disability sometimes, but I just, and then I, had to compare it to the other route you take is escaping the struggle. You take drugs. Why do you take drugs? Escape the struggle. And you come back to a bigger struggle. So that's kind of where it was born out of. Very interesting. Uh, my best friend and our legal counsel for the nonprofit, Dave Wabacher, has a saying that uh, he got from when he got his butt whooped as a youngster uh, down on Front Street, I believe. And it was his dad telling him, get up, and that is his mantra. Because it connected with his life. Get up, and with everything that's happened, it's always about, you're gonna get knocked down, get up. So enjoy the struggle. How freq frequently do your students hear this from you? Well, it's on the board. <laughs> okay. Every day. Um, every time they ask a question, and if it's not specific, or it's just, they're stuck. There's a difference between having a question we can talk about, you know, not every question is a good question. Mm -hmm. A lot of times it's, let me off the hook here. And I just, they know, I'm, I don't have to say it anymore. I just, you know what I'm gonna say, I know, enjoy the struggle. And they go and they figure it out, yeah. they figure it out. Now there's times they do need help. If they give the specific, you know, something they didn't understand direction wise and stuff. But there's times they just, they're stuck. Mm -hmm. And they know how to figure out if they just keep trying. How often do you have to remind yourself? Yeah, I, walking into this place, because <laughs> the last performance I had didn't go so well. Enjoy and the struggle. Music, Sp specifically from your formative years of the 70s, is obviously an extremely important part of your life. You incorporate it into your screenplay a lot, more so than Adam Sandler does in his movie The Wedding Singer. And it, there's such a cool way in Ditchman too, how 70s music gets incorporated, and, and some 80s music. Mm -hmm. I can't, we can't even go there though. Yeah. yeah. There is a small protest in Ditchman too, uh, an effective protest. <laughs> so. And there may, we may allude to that a little earlier, or a little later, excuse me. Why is music so important to you? It, it sets my mood. I, I, I wake up to it. I, I just, it, 
every song I, I can remember a different time because I I've had a wonderful life I I can't I've had the best life and I have so many memories and of this music pl- connects those memories of this place oh, I, I can tell you so much about this place I can remember sitting there watching Blazing Saddles and the fart scene in that movie <laughs> this is in the 60s this is it was early 70s Fart scene where they're sitting around the campfire, and yep. I fall on my seat, and over there was Gary Liette. He fell off his seat, and I can remember sitting back there during a, a John Wayne movie. I had a first date with this beautiful girl, and I wanted to score points, and when the mother said she loved John Wayne, I invited her, and I didn't know she was going to sit in between us, <laughs> right there, back there. And of course, the scariest thing, we saw The Exorcist with Kevin Caper, my neighbor, and we had a walk home on the east side of town oh. after watching The Exorcist. Oh my gosh, that was, yeah. oh. So I got, I just, I, people, my wife gets mad at me because I have so many memories. And, so, and, and music ties. Music helps you remember these things. Yeah, and, and obviously as we mentioned. The theme to The Exorcist, I heard it all the way, you know. <laughs> yeah, you know, th- there's so many inspirational and motivational messaging uh, that is included in the books. and. And, and you get that out of music as well. And, and it, it, sets, it's, it sets up your mood for whatever you're about to partake in, I, I believe, as well. And, and, I mean, when you read these books, I, I love it. it. And as soon as, you know, because you set it up, cue whatever, uh, song. Sometimes, I, didn't, I, I, I think I know music pretty darn well, but there's some songs. Uh, the Ohio Players, I, I had to look them yeah. up on YouTube. Sometimes it slows me down because I'm actually listening to the song before I continue reading again. And uh, you do a very nice job of tying in the mood, what's about to happen, yeah. what did happen with I, music. You know, Rhonda Shelby was my favorite teacher. She, I, I have patterned my teaching style after her, um, along with Floyd Keith, who wasn't a teacher, but he, he was a college leader for Re- City Recreation. But I just imagine her sitting around reading the book and then goes to her Alexa when it's time to hear a song. That is just, that is just so cool. That just is so cool. Well, I was going to bring up music about You Light Up My Life, but I'm going to pass that one up. That's in the book. <laughs> there's some bad <laughs> songs. In, yeah, there's some bad songs <laughs> in the book. We talked about this early, but it's apparent that when, when I read the book, Mr. Greiner is Mr. Ginner. Uh, teach similarly yeah. and that was the student's decision that, that and that that is so awesome and that's one regret I get these students the sophomores on down through fifth grade have helped me but I lose contact with them right I wish I could have Ditchman meetings with them still and stuff well maybe we need so. to do a, a book club Ditchman book club yeah do, do you actually tell uh, students as referenced in the book uh, boring people uh, uh, bored people are boring people. Only boring people get bored? Yeah, there we go. Only boring people get bored. I said, I have, they, they said, I'm bored. I hear, I'm bored. I go, I have an answer to that. If you don't mind me saying it, you might be a little embarrassed by it. And they go, go ahead. And I said, only boring people get bored. Yeah, that's, that's. So they hear that frequently. So my students and my kids hear this all the time. When they say, I'm bored, two by four, two by six. <laughs> Treated or untreated. <laughs> Yeah. Finished or unfinished, yeah. they do not like it. How, how, how do the students respond when they hear that? They smile. Yeah. They're good. I mean, my students, they, they, they can tolerate me. They, you know, they, they can take it. They're tough. Look, they've lived through COVID. Yeah. They had to wear a mask every day last year. Which, that's something that you have in Ditchman too, is trying to do comedy with masks on. Using them as your test audience, it's that was yeah it's hard I, to get a read I, right i couldn't i it's almost you had to read their eyes and then sometimes you can see the smile under the mask and they say the eyes never lie and the eyes never lie that that was that was so ditchman too was entirely trying to read them with their mask on and and you mentioned they, they were so good and uh honest open critics about what you had written and uh, you know that, that's got to be pretty pretty awesome for them. I mean, how, how many kids get to say that they were part of a process? There's to get there's about 300 book? kids part of that process. Not Published. as many for Ditchman too. Yeah, I yeah. mean that that's amazing. Yeah. And what 
besides language arts skills, what, what other skills did the students learn going through this process? Through the process, besides the, you know, I, when I get to the character education stuff, I explain it, history, because there's a lot of history in this book. Yeah, this is like a St. Mary's history. Yes, yes, we've studied, definitely St. Mary's history is in there. Um, grammar, it's not tons of grammar, but there's, they find more grammar mistakes mm -hmm. sometimes. My wife, uh, we had some issues with Ditchman too, because I didn't do the proofreading correct. Then my wife has stepped in with Ditchman too, even though I'm the language arts teacher, um, she's amazing with uh, uh -huh. grammar, and she she has well made the book too. You know, there's there's sketches in Ditchman too that weren't in Ditchman. Yeah, <laughs> which is and who did the sketches? I did the sketches. You did the sketches. <laughs> I'm not an artist, yeah. but, but my students, I do these rough drafts, and that's how the first cover got started. A rough draft, and the students said, "That's funny. It's so bad that it's kind of <laughs> funny." So it's not artwork, but it's almost if you know somebody's doodling yeah that somehow works so. yep and, and whose idea was it to put sketches into the book the students awesome that's so students. awesome that's why i can't that's why i'm i'm glad i'm giving all the money because not that i'm gonna make any money but i just i don't deserve any money mm -hmm. so here we are in the theater i called you that day mm -hmm. in february what, what's it mean for you to be part of the nonprofit, the Friends of St. Mary's Theater and Grand Opera House, to bring this very special place, the theater and the ballroom, back alive. It's going to, this, it'll make us a better community. It'll bring, bring us closer together. And it would, it would be almost like a Christmas Hallmark movie. It's sappy, now, but and it I is. know people don't. And you're dying to get in here, and it's going to happen soon. Um, but I got one issue with you know you got Todd Klosterman, Brad Fisher making sure the roof. You got Dean Klosterman making sure that he's got tons of extra gravel, and he's working on the plumbing. And Dean Axe has brought in his electrical. Yep. But you know what? One priority you're overlooking <laughs> is there a ghost? somewhere in this old, old building. I have my electromagnetic meter. You know, right now it says green, but if we happen to stay here until midnight or so. I'm game. I mean, I'm hearing something back here. That I'm not <laughs> sure what that is. Yeah, well, I think we have some, some extras with us People. here tonight. This is what might be what it's all, but it might get you in here more than anything. The paranormal detector. The paranormal detector. <laughs> That's awesome. And you have that every time that you come in? I have that every time I come in. That's right. We just have been scared to come in too late. It's a, such a, a special place for a special town. I heard today from somebody that doesn't live in St. Mary's, never lived in St. Mary's. And this gentleman told me, this is where my wife and I had our first date. I, I've we heard hear that, that yeah, so I, many times. So many times. So many times. And this is just a special this place. This is the place where I had a lot of my last dates. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy my struggle. Oh, with, <laughs> there's a the song with I, mother. I wrote the song that's been too. Remember, I've been dumped again. Yep. <laughs> I've been dumped again. I wrote that song about how many times I got dumped in places like this. So, <laughs> so yeah. And, and y y you've made a monumental contribution with your book, which is referencing many aspects of St. Mary's. But as we mentioned a couple different times, the royalties that you earn go back to the nonprofit, 501c3, Friends of the St. Mary's Theater Grand Opera House, to help bring this place back alive. The goal is to have in totality this building fully and open by our bicentennial, which is gonna be celebrated in August of 2023. And it's gonna take everybody doing Little their things. part, just as what Joe's and, doing with this and book. We have a list, those that have gone to the website and you said you wanna help and this is what you can do. Please be patient, it's just not, it just hasn't been time yet. Yep. You're, you are documented, you're on the list, but it's just, not quite, it's yep. just not quite time yet. And, and the beautiful thing about this building is there's not a whole lot of construction 
I mean, there's very minimal construction that has to be done. A lot of cosmetic, getting the HVAC and, and the plumbing taken care of. Uh, you know, there's a lot. Um, the exterior of the building really needs to be taken care of. But uh, it, it, it will come in due time, and, and we greatly appreciate everybody's efforts. And, and greatly this, appreciate your effort, Joe. And, and keep the stories coming. You know, my son and I were the first people in here that cleaned up most of the trash was in here. Um, I found this up in the balcony. <laughs> this is probably, I'm not sure how old it is. It, it's hard to see from the camera there, but it's, it can tell. Good and plenty, That's awesome. good and plenty. And how many of you have told me who used to throw it off the balcony? So, not that we want you back here doing that again sometime, but that's just one of those memories. That's just one of those memories. So many. We're, we're about done here, uh, Joe. What, what would it mean for people to purchase your, your books? Um, it's the message, the message. Enjoy the struggle. I, I neglected to talk to, um, the best example of that is my son. Not everybody knows my son as well as I do. And he is probably the biggest living example of enjoying the struggle each and every day that people are unaware of. And so just to escalate that message would mean the world to me. Beautiful. Motivational, inspirational, you're going to laugh, you're going to be in suspense, get the book, you'll enjoy it, and you can help out the St. Mary's Theater Grand Opera House cause. When can we expect to find Ditchman 3? Um, we're going through it pretty fast. It's how we begin each, I have a 90 minute class we try to do, we don't get to it every day obviously. But we try to do, you know, what we can do in five to ten minutes is amazing. Okay. If you just keep at it, hopefully maybe this spring we can send it off to see if the publisher will do it. Because mm -hmm. it's, it's a process. There, yeah. So there's no guarantee. Just there's no guarantee. Two with them. If it's not good, good, if it's not appropriate, it's, yep. if they don't, they're not going to do it. It's got to meet their standards. I, I can't wait to see how. So the, maybe a year from now. Yeah. So. I can't wait to see how the screenplay ends and. And I guarantee it's going to be better than Cheers or uh, St. Elsewhere's ending. Oh. I hated both of those endings. Did you? Yes. They're so, endings can be so sad. Yeah. This is, it ends with a beginning. It, it, the third one ends with a new beginning. Interesting. It really Interesting does. Interesting setup there. It really does. All right, we're going to take another commercial break. We'll be right back. And uh, Joe, we're going to play one more game, Rider Nation Station's Into the Future game. Ooh. We'll be right back. This episode has been brought to you by Minster Bank, Plus One Professionals, Albert Sporting Goods, American Legion Post 323, Fowler's TV, St. Mary's Eagle 767, Speckman Automotive, Auglaise Audiology, Rabel's Auto Service, American Manufacturing Solutions, Speed's Chiropractic, and Miller Funeral Home. The friends of the St. Mary's Theater need your financial help to secure a state grant which we need to raise $500,000 in individual contributions by the end of 2021. Any donation is welcome and suggested donations, which can be pledged, are $200, $1,823, $2,023 and beyond. Send check to Friends of SM Theater PO Box 382 St. Mary's, Ohio or visit Graham Opera House Live to make an online payment to the 501c3. The time is now to make this happen. See more on our Facebook page at Graham Opera House Live. 
<laughs> Thanks to our uh, sponsors to help make Rider Nation Station what it is. The mission of Rider Nation Station is to provide material for today's audience, but more importantly, to provide material for St. Mary's, Ohio, 50 years from now. Let's play Answers for the Future. What actor do you foresee playing Mr. G? The, I'm not sure if I changed my mind on this, but the first one that, that popped in my mind was um, John Senna. John Senna. You want mine? Go ahead. I, I read this with Adam Sandler being Mr. G. Really? I do. Really? I really, really do. Amy. There, there's some controversy there. Because, so, first of all, I teach with the most wonderful staff at St. Mary's Intermediate School. They're wonderful. They put up with me. They put up with all this ditchment. <laughs> it's not nonsense, but sometimes it might seem like nonsense because the crazy things we pulled. We did the commercial we pulled off. Mm -hmm. You know, we had... You needed yes, cooperation and collaboration. But, but I do teach from a hall from uh, Amy Kanapke. Yeah. So Amy... Says, That's her. That's her. So, what actress do you think would play her? That's tough because um, the real Amy is six foot tall, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm short. So, yeah. and, and I and I couldn't come up with and one. And she's thirty years younger than me yeah. too. So I, I couldn't <laughs> come up with one. But uh, as I read, I, I see Adam Sandler being Mr. G. Will your music references in the book be? Well received in 2071, St. Mary's, Ohio. They're 40 years now. That's only 30 more years. Or, well, not 30 more years, but... Uh, 50 more. 50 more. They've already lasted 40 years. I mean, 70s music just... Love it. Stands the test of time. So the answer is yes. Yes. Well received by 2071, St. Mary's, Ohio. All right, this one's going to be challenging here. Of the following selections, put in order with one being the most probable guest, six being the least or likely, I should say, the following St. Mary's location producers, not you, but producers would pick to be an actual scene to shoot in St. Mary's. Your choices are CNC Loft and Lounge, Northmore Golf Course, St. Mary's area. Second Beach, St. Mary's River by the Aqueduct, West Intermediate School Cafeteria, and Elm Grove Cemetery. So, which one do you really think producers would say, we've got to shoot at that location in St. Mary's, Ohio? Oh, but Second Beach, um, the ca school cafeteria is in Ditchman, the original. Okay. The rest are all in Ditchman 3. The rest are all in Ditchman 3. There's a golf course, golf course scene. You want to know There's something really scene, so. interesting? I took out letter C was the canal boat and put Second Beach in it. Did you? Really? I really, After really I, did. And you referenced that at the first so half that, of the interview. And I'm thinking the school cafeteria is not in Ditchman 3, it's in Ditchman 1, the press conference is there, but the others are all in Ditchman 3. Which I've had no... No, no, you don't know. I have no, no. idea. So what, wh which one? Producers are going to say, we've got to shoot here. Pretty much all of but Second Beach. They just, I mean, they just can. They can just. CNC Loft and Lounge, Northmore Golf Course, Second Beach, St. Mary's River by the Aqueduct, West Inter Intermediate School Cafeteria and Elm Grove Cemetery. Skip Boxman Stadium would be good for Ditchman. The new facility would be good for Ditchman 3. I mean, it's just. Interesting. Yeah. All righty. You, I don't you think I have a place in the book for the theater, though. You places better be ready. Well, there's the next, the next movie. I guess that's where just where you got to show it. Will you have a cameo appearance? I don't see me having a cameo. I mean, I don't, Hitchcock did that, Stan Lee did that. I think it's cool they did that. I think I don't wanna, I think that would lessen what they did. I think that's taken, that's. Here's another cameo, your cousin. Nan had a cameo. Nan had a cameo in First Steps. Yeah. Right at the end, just looking. Yeah. yeah. That'd be Nan Davis, Nan Huckerity. Here's a curveball. 
will an annual live audiobook recitation take place on this stage with self-selected St. Marians reading assigned character scripts in front of 400 people who pay $5 each to watch it? Well, that could work like great. I mean, we could do it now. That, yeah. I had an audio book company reach out to me about putting on audio books. I go, it's written in present tense and in screenplay <laughs> format. They go, well, thank you very much anyway. And a rejection already in a book that's already right. published. So, wouldn't, that, wouldn't that be cool? That, but that would work. And every year, it, it becomes an annual? I don't know. It's a play. The one is really written as a screenplay. We say screenplay. It really could be a screen story. But they put Dishman 2 into a play format. If you notice the house, mm -hmm. which I thought makes it even easier to read. So, that'd be cool. 400 people in here. Now, I Watching would, and listening. I would have to, to the book. I might have to partake in that. <laughs> That's, yeah, I might have to partake in that. You may have to be Mr. G. I might have to be the advisor and make sure that you're acting like the character the is supposed, it's supposed to, act. to be. Yes. We call that when they. That would be something I would love to do. You know, the, the one that makes it authentic. Oh, that's not, you know, you got to yeah. keep you yep. authentic. So. How will St. Marion's 50 years from now remember the legacy of Joe Ganner? <laughs> I hope it isn't that I passed gas in the classroom <laughs> as I taught. <laughs> but uh, I have a picture of Barney Fife in my classroom. Okay. Now, Rhonda Shelby said that I got it from her, but she originally stole it from me. She <laughs> sent over um, Ashman, Mark Ashman, one day, and she, he stole it from my classroom, and she kept it. Then she retired, and she brought it back. And it read, that's the only decoration I got, is a picture of Barney Fife, because I get overstimulated by too sure. many things in the classroom. And it represents, it pretty much represents firm but fun. Firm but fun. I just hope that's what... He was firm, but he was fun. So. And no matter what, he always enjoyed the struggle. I always, well, yeah, I, I, it's, a, it's a lifetime trying to, mm -hmm. yes. Well, we've come to the end of our show. It is our hope at Rider Nation Station this podcast did entertain, educate, enlighten, and elevate your perspective about St. Mary's, Ohio. We hope a story has been told that augments the development of relationships, old and new, to promote growth for all who do, did, and will call St. Mary's Ohio home. Again, I want to thank Mr. Greiner, uh, sorry about that, Mr. Ginner, for enlightening us that one's never too old to dream a new dream, and no matter what, to enjoy the struggle. Thank you for sharing with us the creation of Ditchman and Ditchman 2. Thank, thank you for motivating me even more. Destiny, all the way around. Rider Nation Station will be airing more of these informational podcasts as well as Rough Rider Winter Sports. Stay tuned for additional information. Please tune in. Share the station with your friends and family. I hope you think positively about our town. The town we did not inherit from our ancestors, but the town we borrowed from our grandchildren. Peace to you, my fellow St. Marians, past, present, and future, always and always, and fellow ghost. Ooh, did you say I had a jump there? Right? Peace. This episode has been brought to you by Minster Bank, Plus One Professionals, Albert Sporting Goods, American Legion Post 323, Fowler's TV, St. Mary's Eagle 767, Speckman Automotive, Auglaise Audiology, Rabel's Auto Service, American Manufacturing Solutions, Speed's Chiropractic, and Miller Funeral Home.